Hi, for fun, I'm Heitner, and welcome to Phenalysis. In this episode, we're going to be looking at the importance of zone defense and pushback, and how it can give you an advantage in maintaining your leads. A perfect example of this is in the East China Finals 1, where the Red Alliance of 10505N and 18968K battles the Blue Alliance of 9123C and 8977A. The Blue Alliance was able to get an early lead, especially due to their strong autonomous routine and they were able to maintain this lead through focusing on their zones despite the quick D scores by the other lines. See if you can spot exactly when and where this happened and how it leads to the blue lines as well. Let's dive in and let us know your thoughts on Phenalysis. This video on fun is brought to you by our viewers, supporters, members, and also in partnership with the following. Build your alliance and discover why so many VEX alumni choose Kettering University. Every student at Kettering experiences their cutting-edge co-op programs that seamlessly blend the professional and academic worlds. Kettering co-ops are a fully immersive working experience at the leading edge of industry. Head on over to kettering.edu slash VEX to learn more about their incredible programs and get more information. Did you know that Fun has awesome merch options, including game-themed merch available at funroboticsnetwork.com slash merch? From cute thematic options to robots and fun-themed apparel, you can directly support Fun and look good at the same time. You can also become a Fun member or supporter through YouTube Join to get early access to most of our content. Thank you for your continued support. Let's jump straight into this match, but first, let's introduce the teams. On the Red Alliance, on the bottom left, we have 10505N, and on the top left, we have 18968K. Then, on the blue alliance, on the bottom right, we have 8977A on the bottom right, and we have 9123C on the top right. One of the important reasons to focus on what each of these robots is, is because each of these robots is going to be focusing on their own zone throughout the match, as mentioned in the intro. That is, that 8977A is going to be focusing on just this bottom long goal, and then also this top middle goal, this one right here, the one that they have perfect access to. Then, 9123C is going to be focusing on this long goal, the top one, and they're going to be focusing on this middle bottom goal, again, the one that they have direct access to. Throughout the match, they're going to be focusing on their quote-unquote zones, only focusing on those goals, and by doing so, they're going to be able to control the match in a very effective way, especially once they get this advantage from Auton. But let's break down what's actually going to happen in Auton. Well, 9123C and 8977A are going to have a very unique strategy that I haven't really seen before in any matches. If we can just skip to here, they're going to immediately get to this ball rush, which is very standard of an Auton. How, then they're going to go straight to this long goal. Again, very standard. Both teams are going to go to their own long goal. They're going to try and get this control bonus as early as possible. However, what they're going to do differently is they're actually going to then go to this middle goal, each of their respective middle goal. So obviously A977A is going to go to their quote unquote zone one or bottom zone uh, top uh, top middle goal and then um, 9123C is going to go to their zone two or top right zone uh, bottom goal and they're going to try and score a bunch of bol go balls in there after scoring in their respective long goals. They're then going to go back to the long goal and try and kind of push their balls along so that they end up having the control bonus. Let's watch this play out. As you can see, they both get to these long goals really quickly. They both have a bunch of balls in there. Um, this bottom left alliance, uh, bottom left robot 10505N, uh, actually goes to their match loader and they end up missing their balls, so they're not here. Uh, otherwise, they would have tied in balls and would have been kind of a standstill. However, what uh, 18986K is doing ineffectively here is that they're actually going for this. Uh, top middle goal uh, rather than going straight for this long goal which when these two robots are going to end up going back to the middle goals to to kind of put their balls in this ball is going to end up getting de-scored and it's going to be completely ineffective they're getting to long goal too late and it's just going to be a really bad strategy for them as you can see both these robots go for the middle goal they unload a bunch of balls um, and then they go back to their long goals and push the balls along uh, with their little scraper arms or whatever you may call that and they end up getting both control bonuses so at this point in the match, they're up a ton. Uh, they have both the middle goals. Um, each of them deposited a few balls in there. Um, 9123C has only deposited one in there. But they both have their middle goals, and they also have their long goals. So they're just up a ton. What this is going to end up allowing them to do is they're going to be able to focus on their zones. But the Red Alliance is going to have two things to focus on. See, the Red Alliance is going to have to focus on both this long goal and the middle goal if they want to try and win the match. Because they're going to need um, either both long goals and none of the middle goals, or they're going to need both middle goals and one of the long goals, right? So they're down a ton because they're down all a ton, they're down these middle goals, 
and then this is just going to allow 9123C and A977A to kind of play in their zones and just focus on trying to maintain this. So immediately what 9123C does in this match, once it actually starts playing, is that they're going to go straight for this middle goal and deposit a few more uh, balls in the low zone. That gives them, again, a huge advantage because now they have this entire bottom goal. And again, there's another thing for this top alliance of 18968K to focus on. Even though they're trying to descore this, because 9133C is playing so effectively in their zone, as soon as they try and descore this goal, 9133C is just going to come straight back. They're going to come straight back and descore, and they're just going to continue to maintain their zone. Now, similarly, their alliance of 8977A is going straight to the match loader. They're getting a few more balls that they can either deposit in this long goal or they can deposit in this uh, middle goal. Now, they actually have the luxury of being able to wait to determine where they should deposit the balls based on where this, uh, one, this team of 10505N goes because they have both and because they have that advantage. So see, they're both playing in their zones. They're playing a quote-unquote zone defense where they just are playing off their opponent and they can do that because they have this early lead. Now let's watch this play out a little bit more. See, as mentioned, when 9123C um, gets descored a little bit, they go straight back and they're just able to descore because they're focusing so much on their zone and they're just able to play off what their opponent does. At this point, there's basically no balls in this bottom goal. There's a few balls, balls in this top goal. But because... Um, 8977A was able to have that luxury of waiting to see what their opponent did. They had a ball, a few balls, they were able to just deposit them, and now they're back to having this control zone. They're still having this middle control zone, and then they have this long goal control zone. Now, an interesting thing what's happening here with 18968K is that rather than trying to play some offensive move, they're just kind of sitting there waiting for the other alliance to or the other alliance to do something, their opponent to do something, which actually is a bad strategy because um, similar to a game like high stakks, when when you're down, you camping in the corner might be an effective strategy, but when you're down, you're not going to win by doing that. See, camping here could be good if you had this long goal control bonus, right? Or if you had the middle goal control bonus, or if you had Auton. But because they don't have that, they really should not be just sitting here. They really should be trying to score in some manner. See, that this play is good where they try and descore, but immediately they can get descored. They need to be making some plays here, whereas 9023C has the luxury of just figuring out what the opponent does and just kind of playing off that. As you can see, they have a huge descore here, and they descore a few of their balls, but they're able to get them back. But even still, they're winning. And then, um, similarly, 8977A um, is, is able to capitalize because this long goal, they have an advantage in, and even though it's only one ball, they do have the advantage in there. And they're able to go to this middle goal, and they're able to score a few more balls um, when the when the opponents are in a scrum. Now, the the opponents are actually tying each other up here because they don't have enough balls. They haven't gotten an advantage early, so they need to try and find more balls as, as effectively as possible. Um, and so they're in a scrum, and now now both of these teams are perfectly playing in their zone. They haven't left their zones the entire match. They've just been sitting here focusing on uh, defending what they already have. Whereas the other team is having to drive all around, do crazy things, and just try and uh, cause chaos, which the other, which the blue alliance is able to play perfectly off of. Again, this scrum is freeing up, freeing up perfectly for 8977A to score a few more balls in the middle, and then just kind of defend their zone. They actually go to this side to take away their um, to take away their opponent's advantage, which. I normally wouldn't recommend, but because there was such a tie-up over here, it was perfect because they had to, they were able to cut off their opponent's pathway to the goal. Now, Blue Alliance is up huge here. There's almost practically no way for them to lose. So what they're just going to do is, again, sit in their zones while the other team continues to play. And so even though the other team is trying to have these quick descores, as mentioned in the intro, there's no way for them to win the match because even though they descore that, immediately 9123C is coming back towards getting a few more balls, scoring them back, and then just immediately reclaiming that bonus. Now we're within the 22nd mark where the blue alliance, or the red, where the red alliance really is not looking strong because there's no real way for them to win unless they double park. And even still, it's not looking too hot for them. The blue alliance continues to play where they are. Um, the, eight, the team of 8977A ends up going to this top goal just because there's a little scrum here. And one thing that the Red Alliance does actually do really well here is they end up getting this double park off really quickly. It ends up not being a park, um, or not being a double park because I think this top row out was touching the outside here. Um, but what they are able to do is effectively double park 
um, which could make up for this bonus of 30 points. However, because they're down this middle goal, they're down this top goal, and they're down this bottom goal, it doesn't really matter um, that they're able to get this park off quickly. So really, what the key takeaways are from this match is that uh, if you're able to maintain a lead, really what you should be doing is playing patiently, right? Um, A977A, again, focused on this bottom right zone, which what I was calling zone one, and um, 9023C focused on this top right zone, which I was calling zone two, and they just kind of stayed there waiting for the opponents to do something and then just kind of countering what their opponents did. If they were not up in the match, they would not have been able to do that, but because they were up in the match, they had the ability to do that, and the problem with the other team was actually that they were trying to play the same way, right? The other alliance was trying to have a 105.05 and playing, playing, I'll call this zone 3 in this bottom right, and their other robot of 18968K playing the zone 4 of the top left. Um, but because they were down so much, that wasn't really an effective strategy. So the takeaways here, if you're up, you should play in these zones. And if you're not in the, if you're not up, you shouldn't just stick to your zone. You should try and cause as much chaos as possible, try and do as much stuff as possible to try and get an advantage. Because ultimately, just by being patient, you're not going to win if you're down. Wow, that was an awesome match. It's always so great to watch these China teams play, especially at such a high level. It's a treat. What do you think the Red Alliance should have done differently? Do you think that sticking to their strategy was the right thing, or should they have tried to bait Blue out of their zones? I don't know, it's always such a sticky situation when you lose Auton and when you, things don't go to plan. Overall, thanks for watching this video, and please remember to like and subscribe to Fun so that you can keep up to date with all of our content. I'm Heitner, and thanks for watching Fun Analysis. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. Build your alliance and discover why so many VEX alumni choose Kettering University. Every student at Kettering experiences their cutting-edge co-op programs that seamlessly blend the professional and academic worlds. Kettering co-ops are a fully immersive working experience at the leading edge of industry. Head on over to kettering.edu slash VEX to learn more about their incredible programs and get more information.